Ah, greetings, Clone Club. Uh, my name is Ethan Alter. I'm here from Yahoo TV, and we're going to be talking with the cast of Orphan Black tonight. So get excited. Yeah, that's right. One more time. One more time. <laughs> Uh, first up, I want to introduce Christian Brun, the one and only Donnie Hendricks coming down. There we go. Next up, Jordan Gavaris. Felix in the house. Jordan. Woo! <laughs> well, thanks. And Tatia Maslani. Who's that? She's a few characters on the show, just a few. Uh, next, Maria Doyle Kennedy. <laughs> Bringing Sing Street power. Uh, number five, uh, Kevin Hanchard. <laughs> Last honest cop in Toronto. And finally, uh, Ari Millen. Yeah. Project Caster. All right, so this is, we've just seen the first episode of the last season. I think everything we all need to know is, is, is everything going to be okay? Is, is everyone no, going to be okay? No, not at all. Okay? Not in the slightest. Right. Not in the least. <laughs> I mean, going into the last season of a show like this, do you are you nervous? Are you, how, how do you feel when you're when you're on the on the precipice, precipice of wrapping everything up? I think I think it was scary to think of the like prospect of doing the last season, yeah. um, in terms of just how much storyline was created in four seasons and how much we had to wrap up and doing justice to the characters and to the to the relationships that we'd kind of developed. Um, and also knowing that the fans had, you know, their theories and their ideas and trying to, like, think of that, but also do something different. Jordan, turn off your phone. Do you know how often Austin's that happened right while now. we worked? Like, sure. <laughs> so, all the time, remember? And I was like, oh, I, I think I blamed the person who sent me the text, too. I was like, oh, why are they sending me a text right now? It's okay. Kevin it's pocket dialed fault. me from yeah. set last week <laughs> from another show. And during a take, all he could hear from his pocket was, Hello, Hello from me. <laughs> Hello. It was, it was the Can you highlight of my career. Yeah. <laughs> they said cut, and all you hear was, Hello. I, I turned into my mother, where yeah. I'm just like, Can you hear me? Hello. <laughs> yeah. It happens to everybody. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's not embarrassing in the slightest. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Tatiana, I think my favorite moment in this um, uh, episode, this premiere, is the moment when Rachel comes down from the mount, essentially, and has seen Westmoreland and just has this look of true belief on her face. Uh, uh, religion's always been underrunning, uh, an undercurrent in the show, and myth. Uh, how is that going to play into this this season? How is it for all the characters, including Rachel? Yeah, I think like belief or faith or like religion kind of plays into a few of the characters in a big way, whether it's um, you know belief in science or in sisterhood or any of those things. Um, but with Rachel, it's really interesting because her, her journey is very interesting this whole season. She kind of has always been this very uh, closed, clinical, icy person. And we get to see this other side of her that's sort of anointed. And it's, it was really fun. Yeah. Jordan, last season we got to see Felix meet his biological sister, uh, yeah. which is a really big moment for him, and, and sort of estranged him for a little bit from his adopted sister. Uh, he seems to be back in the fold this year, though. Uh, what, what, what can will there be any ramifications from that left over in terms of adopted versus biological siblings and how that plays a role in the show? I mean, I feel like the the whole idea of who is our family or, or who are we in relation to our family has kind of been this recurrent theme. So I think that we're still, of course, we're still going to end up exploring that. But I think this. This season, it was it was just. I mean, we're 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 wrapping this thing up. We're wrapping up this. We're trying to get to the center of this ridiculous kaleidoscopic labyrinth. Uh, did, you say, did you say blabyrinth? I did. It's more complex than a regular yeah. labyrinth. No, I like it. Yes, I like labyrinth a lot. 
what's wrong with me tonight? We haven't done we haven't done this in a long time, you guys. So we're giddy because we haven't seen each yeah, other in a long really time. We're really happy to see that's everybody. Cried. Well, did we all cry? Well, we all well, cried. Well, I did. We all cried. It was I all didn't of cry. us. But yes. Yeah, uh, yes, um, I think it's it, he's just going to be, I think the nature of the last season and, and the nature of this uh, pursuit of the top, the top of this pyramid is such that, you know, he's, he's with his, he's with his family, whoever that may be, whoever that turns out to be. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Uh, Maria, uh, one, one of the, uh, the the most deepest relationships I think on the show is the one between Mrs. S and uh, uh, Kira, and how she's had to step in and be the mother for Kira when uh, Sarah isn't able to, and that was a big part of last season. And and uh, going into this, how 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 do you uh, feel about that relationship, and what are we going to see from it uh, in this final season? I think it's a, it's all kind of all changing a lot because um, uh, well I'm, I had my own mom for a while suddenly appeared and that kind of changed the relationship between Mrs S and Sarah as well seeing her Mrs S relationship with her own mom and how all the sort of um, strange dynamic was repeated and I think in this season you get to see uh, Mrs S let go a little bit more and and Sarah and her just come together or realize how much alike they are as well as how much they fight and where all that comes from and um, try to pass it on and then for it to pass down to, to Kira like that. It's a lot of that going on. It's great. And uh, uh, Ari, uh, for you, you've sort of had uh, the opposite of what Tatiana's had to do in a way. You started off playing many clones, and you sort of telescoped down to one, as we've seen. Uh, you're, you're subtracting instead of adding on. Uh, what has that process been like and uh, sort of uh, going in, uh, in the reverse? And how, what is the sort of end goal for a caster, do you think, and Ira in particular? I mean, for me, I think I started off playing uh, characters that I would normally get cast as, <laughs> and then I end up with the just complete opposite of who I am and I have no instincts whatsoever for Ira. So that has been, that was the, the I mean, it, that's been my favorite thing of just like the struggle of, of trying to figure this guy out. So um, I'm kind of happy that I had to do him solo and I didn't have to worry about other guys at the same time. <laughs> I mean, in general, for both of you, for both you and Tatiana, since you are balancing multiple characters every season, that always is something that I know actors love to know about, the idea of playing multiple characters in the same show. What's, sort of, what's some of the process that you use to get into the mindset of doing each character and keeping them distinct? Well, first off, trusting the writing. Uh, and then second, trusting your scene partner. And I don't know. I mean, it's, it's, it's what's my experience with the Fantastic was just like, they were written differently. So it, it could just key into those very those differences and then sort of extrapolate. Um, but we have a very marvelous cast who every day you know, are just giving themselves over. And uh, I mean, that's the favorite part of every day. It's just not a job. You're just going to hang out with your friends and uh, explore. So that made Ira, you know, I don't know. It's just like, <laughs> anyways, I, I can, I can just, so tough, <laughs> so tough. <laughs> it was hard, it was hard. <laughs> uh, Kevin, Art's journey, uh, it's, it's been fun to watch. It's sort of like, uh, the, 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 again, it really is the last honest cop of Toronto at this point. He seems like the <laughs> only one on the forts who is willing to, you know, be on the good side. Uh, how do you sort of see him um, over the five years and, and, and are you happy with where he ultimately ends up? It's been a really interesting journey over the last five years because I think at the beginning, you know, Art came in with this furrowed brow and, you know, was hammering on, on Sarah as Beth. And, and uh, ultimately, we weren't sure whether he was on uh, the good side or the bad side, really, of this whole conspiracy. Uh, and then as, as time went by, we realized that he was, you know, on board with the Sestras and was sort of brought in a clone, clone club. Um, but n now, as we round into season five, we see that, you know, the stakes have been raised that much more. And uh, there, there's more... Uh, you guys have watched episode one, right? Yeah. Okay, so he, so we know that you know the the stakes are are that much higher for him, and uh, you know uh, Neil Lucian has his you know you know has his family in their in their sights, and uh, so he's got some tough decisions to make. It's no longer just about what he feels is right and wrong; it's about what he needs to do uh, to help Sarah and the Sestras, and to help himself, and to uh, and to close this thing down, really, because that's what makes art 
art is his dogged sort of determination to, to do the right thing. And the last season we got to see um, some of the backstory that we didn't see in season one. We saw some of his history and, and more of his relationship with Sarah and or uh, and and uh, the and, and his daughter. Uh, excuse me, Beth and his and, and also his daughter. How did that help deepen your understanding of the character? It, going it, it helped it a whole lot because. Um, you know, you don't get that all the time when you work in TV. You don't know what the character's full story is, so you create one for yourself. Yeah, we'll and make one up. Yeah, you, you, but you, you kind of have to, right? You have to create your own roadmap and hope that it jives with whatever the writers had, had, had in mind, have in mind, and will have in mind down the line. Do you know what I mean? Uh, but you just kind of have to step out boldly and, and do whatever it is you have to do. But when we finally did get that sort of... Um, that storyline that that Beth and, and Art had had a relationship, um, it was it was great for me because it it really sort of uh, allowed me to uh, drop an anchor somewhere and lay some roots and say this is the point, this is the reason why you know he's putting um, you know cell phones in, in dead women's hands and 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 doing and you know and, and freaking out in, in Fung's diner and and all that kind of stuff because uh, it's more than just oh my god I'm gonna lose my you know sixty thousand dollar a year job it's it's about it's about a love it's about an affection it's about that's what you're uh, getting paid it's a cop man <laughs> cop, cops, cop, cops don't cops don't make that much money man. so you know but it's it, but you know what I'm saying though it's 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 about more than that so uh, I I love when we get those little little hints and then you have to sort of go backwards you have to uh, you know reverse engineer <laughs> everything that you've done and make sure that all of the sort of marks that you put in drive with what you're going to do that moving forward, up. that it all adds yeah, up. Yeah. Or the you holes know. that you didn't know you weren't filling are suddenly there. Yeah. So. And you're like, oh, right. <laughs> but really, that's what you're always asking for as an actor. Like, we're, we're always on set. We're always grabbing the writers and grabbing the showrunners and grabbing everybody and saying, why, 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 why? <laughs> and when they finally actually put their feet down and say, this is why, you go, okay, great. That's a rung I can grab onto and swing to the next level. And you, 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 you thrive on that kind of stuff. Well, for everyone, I mean, is there ever a point uh, to that where uh, they give you a piece of information that contradicts what you had in mind? And then, and like, a specific b bit of information that you didn't expect, you're like, that's not what I thought. I thought. And what do you do when that happens? In, in season one, uh, the whole season, I was asking John and Graham, am I Allison's monitor? Like, am, especially during <laughs> episode six where I'm getting tortured by Allison. <laughs> and I was like, guys, can you just tell, like, am I or aren't I? And, and John was like... Well, <laughs> like, we don't know, but just play that you're not, you're not her monitor. And it was actually helpful because there was no hint of me actually knowing that I'm the monitor when we're shooting that scene. It's kind of a, a trick that you can play on actors because I'm, you know, like, I don't know if they had told me that I was the monitor, I might have actually just, just played a little hint of like, you know, something that would give it away. So it, it was one of those lovely little mysterious leave me in the dark pieces of direction that ended up working. But, you know, that's up to the showrunners to sort of figure out how much. Otherwise, they're a pretty open book. Like, they'll, they're very talkative. I do think there's something kind of freeing, too, about um, making a choice and then having it co the complete opposite thrown at you. I think sometimes my reaction is like, no, no, because this plus this equals this. But life isn't like that, and and human beings aren't like that. Like the one thing that cha makes us different from computers is that we have irrational behavior, and so to allow for complete polar opposite things to exist within a character is is something exciting, but s scary too because you can lose that. No, this is how they're defined, you know, and and but it but it is kind of a a very human thing, I think. For them to be like not not just like not just that people are complicated and they have different bits, but almost contradictory bits. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, because we do people do. It seems impossible, but it's absolutely the way it is. And we're often lying. Like yeah. you know, like well, we, speak for yourself. I'm always Tatiana. lying. <laughs> I lie all the time, which is true. Um, <laughs> figure that one out. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, to have that thing of like. I might say this on the on the on the top, but like I could be the you know it's yeah. usually the polar opposite beneath. I don't know. <laughs> I'm a liar. <laughs> That's the main takeaway from this. The yeah. Tatiana's a liar. So I would give. 
<laughs> there, there, we always talk about getting into character and and and, uh, and and preparing to play a character, but in this case, you're you're approaching the end. How do you disentangle yourself from a character? You've been playing for five years. What process do you go through to sort of? And are you disentangled yet? How do you feel on that? Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, we. Uh, it was weird the last two weeks of shooting, saying goodbye to different. For, for for me, different clones, and then for all of us, I think saying goodbye to relationships and um, different characters, and we had these amazing like clapouts that you know it was a series wrap on so and so or whatever, and um, it was uh, it's it's hard to process because you do kind of really rely on these characters to define you as an actor and as a person and. Um, you know, the experience has been so life-changing, I think, for all of us and such an amazing creative ground to play in. So to think of not going back to that is, yeah. I, uh, I, don't I haven't processed it no. yet. No, I think I'm still in <laughs> denial. Yeah. I don't think time. any of us will really, like uh, I was saying this at the time, there was so much crying every day and so much separating and then we'd have another bit of a party or a sing song or something. It was really amazing. But I don't think uh, until next September when we're due to go back and we mentally start making the lists and like we'll be going, oh, and then we're like, oh no, right. <laughs> I think I think then we, yeah, I really think it'll be, because so, it's marked our time yeah. half the year for five years. You know, it's quite a big chunk of our lives. So, yeah, I'm, I'm promoting the idea that we all just meet up and go on holiday somewhere next <laughs> September. Yes. Toronto Island for the weekend. It's Come flooded. on. It's flooded. It's flooded. Shoot a little it's higher. They've abandoned Toronto Island. Yeah. It's flooded. Let's shoot a little higher. It won't be by September. Right. Good point. <laughs> but it's, it's remarkable, though, because you, you think about it, um, five years is, is longer than high school for most. It's longer than most marriages <laughs> nowadays. Do you know what I mean? And 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 we've made it through mostly intact relationship wise. You know, like we, I mean, like we, we as yeah, we only as, hate uh, as one of those guys down there. I forgot. I've forgotten their names. The ones down at the end there. One of them said, "We're a family." I can't, but I can't remember which one of those guys said it. Um, but it's it's true. So uh, you know, it's it's. Uh, it was like a. It, I, I I think I said it was like a funeral a day for the last yeah. two months when we were saying bye to different characters and. It was it I was, was like, exhausting, and be... and I wasn't there all the time. Like I can only imagine what it was like for someone who was there every day. By the end, I just feel like I didn't even feel like by the time yeah. by my wrap out, I was like, nope, I wasn't. I just wasn't <laughs> wasn't there. I didn't cry. I just kind of had this really dumb smile on my face. I was like, <laughs> and they brought out a gift, and I don't even think I processed what the gift was. I don't know. It was just very strange. The best was Skylar. Oh my god! She was yeah. like. Ball, or who plays mm. Kira? She was mm. bawling, like bawling, bawling. And they brought out this present. She was like, "Can I open it right now?" <laughs> and, like, and then like dived right into it, which is so great. <laughs> Dichotomy or yeah. whatever it was. Yeah, the <laughs> thing. <laughs> the thing. That line. Which one was the line? <laughs> I didn't know what to do. Uh, like, I was on the very last day, I'd finished mine and I was finished. And I was like, oh, yeah, great. And then they were filming until four in the morning that night. So I went home. No, not the last day. It wasn't the last day, the four in the morning. It was just the, the last day that I was on. But I was finished before everybody else. But I went home at about 11 or something. And then I was just kind of mooching around the house. And then I was like, well, they're still working until two. So I went back. I just, I just didn't know what to do, so I just went back and just hung and sat in the chairs, freezing cold, just like, might as well be here, you know, <laughs> mental. Exact same when I was, I was wrapped early one day. Yeah. Went home and was like, what do I do? I was like trying to untangle lights or something. And just then I was like, like, this is no, useless, I don't want to be home. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, those of us who've seen The Handmaid's Tale know what happens to Donnie in the future, so that, that, that's already been answered. <laughs> but Turns into a creepy <laughs> doctor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you find yourself thinking, um, for those of you who survived the finale, where the characters are beyond this? Like, is that, do you think your, your thoughts will turn to them at some times, wondering where they'll be uh, in f five or ten years from now? I think it's all in the comic book. <laughs> I don't know. Do any of you guys have the feeling, because I've had this feeling. <laughs> do any of you guys have this feeling? I have this feeling occasionally <laughs> that I'm going to run into him walking down the street. <laughs> who? Character? Run into who? Are you talking about your character? Felix, yes. Oh. I have this very bizarre feeling occasionally. <laughs> You're all laughing, but it's it's perfectly rational. <laughs> I do have this strange do you do not like him or no, no, just no, no. Well, you as maybe, him. <laughs> maybe or maybe him. 
<laughs> I do not have that feeling. Well, no, I, 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 do, I do not have that no. feeling, ever, not once. Great. Not once. You know, guys, thanks for making me feel so okay as a person. Just move on. Just move on to the next. Most actors are like, will I ever work again? You know, will anybody like, ever will like I me? See this You're like, will creation? I see any of the characters I created? Will they mug me on my way home? Not just me, though. I sometimes think about bumping into Sarah. Not Tat, Sarah. <laughs> no? no? Are you serious? Are you high? <laughs> Great, great. Totally thrown under oh, the bus. Man. I love it. I love it. So embarrassed. <laughs> but we're a family. I really thought that I was. I we're really, a family. Everybody was going to be like, really yes, thought you guys oh were going to be like, yes. Yeah, and that's totes, why I wasn't totes, afraid man. to say it. And now yeah. I'm just going to dress up it. as Allison one day and just walk by her house. <laughs> 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 we should all actually just stalk around your house, oh like God. in, you know. Oh man, that would be. Hilarious. Yeah, I think that's what we do in September. We all show up at George's, George's house. in character, yeah, yeah. and really, like and when he wakes character. up in the morning and just really freak him out. I would just think there was a gas leak or something. Like, oh, I don't know. Oh dear. Oh dear. <laughs> And thanks for coming out. As everybody. long as it's not. Yeah. <laughs> this will be the Netflix reunion special. Yeah, just, yeah, just, just, yeah, yeah. Everyone walking through. <laughs> All right, quick lightning round. Uh, favorite, all time favorite series finale. Ooh. What would you say? Ooh. <laughs> oh, the last, the, the last episode of the first installation of Futurama mm. was really good. Oh. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. that yep. was really good. Before the yeah. reboot, yep. Um, <laughs> I just watched a show called River, and I choked up. It was I, just such a subtle performance. So I, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I'm, I, I, <laughs> so uh, it's so it's so easy sometimes just to play like depressed and and two dimensional. But Skarsgård, just on the on a dime, will switch, and you'll see a smile, and you're. And then when it finally, you know, comes to a head at the end and you sort of realize the entire relationship, holy crap. Mm. <laughs> I think our, I haven't seen it yet, but I think our, our finale is going to be the best I've ever seen. Hey, oh, that, that's a given. Yeah, there you absolutely. go. <laughs> Wants to tell you what happened? No, no, no. But uh, you can't tell can't, anybody. anybody. <laughs> Uh, I'm I'm still a big fan of the Sopranos ending. So so many people are really upset by it, and I won't talk about it if you haven't seen it. But I I just love that ending. I was like, oh, oh, I, please, please I, like me. So I love that one. Please like me. Please like me. Have you guys seen Please Like Me? No. Watch it. It's really great. It's Josh Thomas's series. Have you not seen Please Like Me? It's fantastic. Mm -hmm. They only did four seasons, but it, he's an Australian comedian, and it's it's brilliant. It's really great. And this the series finale was handled very well. It was handled very well. <laughs> like I am my father tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I, d I don't get to a lot of finales because I think I'm afraid to finish shows. It's like finishing a book. I always get a little bit low after I finish a, a novel. So it's kind of similar. Like, I, one of my favorite shows for a while was Battlestar Galactica. I still haven't seen, like, the last half of the fourth, the last season. I haven't finished it, and I just can't. Don't. I'm getting don't. It's not worth it. See, and that's enough for me not to finish it. Controversial opinion order. I love the Battlestar Galactica finale, but, you know. I, 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 do, I, I have do to too. watch it. I liked it, too. Right. Okay, good. Two against two. <laughs> uh, well, let's see. We've got some uh, questions submitted from the audience here. So let's start with uh, Tammy. There's a question for Tatiana. Um, how difficult is it to not do one of the characters outside of the show? Is Tammy Just here? like when you're shopping around. Hi, Hi Tammy. Um, well, yeah, they certainly pop up at different times. I think it's more when I go to work, when I go back to a new character, um, because I've been playing them so so much for five years, the instincts and the impulses are still there. So it's, it's trying to um, not allow them to be a default or a fallback kind of thing, so that I'm, I'm continually sort of pushing to what, what, the, what that, this new character wants. Because they're all so varied and their instincts, are, their impulses are all so different that they, it can, I can kind of fall into them easy. 
Oh. <laughs> yeah. Allison, Helena pops up all the time when I'm trying to go. <laughs> Whenever I eat, Helena is there. It's like... Like when someone shows up with babka cake in the green room, you know, suddenly. Oh, suddenly. thank you yeah, so much. Thank you. thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much I'm for the I'm on the verge cake. of throwing up because I ate so much babka cake. <laughs> we, were, we were so hungry. It was yes. so good. Thank you so great. much for the thank babka cake. It was great. Thank you for that. <laughs> so good. Really quickly, just the relationship between Donnie and Helena has been so much fun to watch. It's a big part in this episode, too. Yeah. Was that been, has that been a fun relationship? That's been to, uh, so much fun. I think Donnie and Helena love working together. Yeah. It was always wild because we, we like to do improv before a take starts and kind of outro the scene. Usually, after a while, they're like, okay, let's pull it back minutes. a bit. Yeah, yeah, for like 10 minutes. Because it's just so much fun. And I, I even remember when we were making soap, it was kind of early on in the Helena Donnie relationship. And improving with Helena is absolutely bonkers. <laughs> like, it's, you don't know what's going to come out of that mouth. It's just so strange and wonderful and exciting and new. And yeah, it was, it was always such offensive. a blast. <laughs> and, and mildly uh, offensive in the yeah. best way. Yeah. Uh, question from Natasha for uh, Jordan and Maria. Um, I'm sure other can weigh in as well. What is your favorite, uh, who is your favorite clone to act with? Oh, gosh, I love them all for different reasons, mm -hmm. I guess. I mean, I have to say, I've, I felt so mm -hmm. maternal about Sarah, so that was a big, you know, thing for me, obviously. And so I just wanted to mind Helena so much. And, mm -hmm. you know, I wanted to live in Alison's craft room. And there was a lot of... Was, I like different things about them all, you know. Yeah. And it's weird to, to feel what the different characters do do to me or do to other, like yeah. you know what I mean? Like when I'm working with Sarah, immediately I feel uncomfortable and I feel um, kind of shaky and and vulnerable a lot of the times. Just usually there's a lot of emotional discomfort. And then when I'm working with Allison, there's just I'm having a lot of fun most of the time, <laughs> and I'm not I'm not as un, I'm not as uncomfortable. I'm usually very much enjoying myself or or feel a little bit freer. It's just really interesting to see what each each clone does to my character or even just my my myself my body and um yeah in retrospect like looking at looking back at different things or how i was always afraid of helena like i was i was uncomfortable to improvise with helena i i, I wouldn't do that i just felt weird about it i don't i don't know why i was afraid of what she was going to say i was kind of afraid of offending her <laughs> I think it might take a lot to offend her. I think so. Yeah. Or like offend, insulting, like mm. insulting her. Mm. But it was, it's interesting. Or like how I always kind of wanted Rachel to like me. <laughs> I think we all felt that with Rachel. I did. Well, she's just so cool. Yeah. <laughs> cool and cruel. Cool and cruel. That the sounds Rachel like story. a rat. That sounds like her album. <laughs> cool, cool and cruel. Cool and cruel. Rachel. Or her memoirs. I don't know. Either or. Kevin and Ari, any, any favorite clones that you uh, like to act opposite? Uh, you know, Sarah was like, I mean this in the best way. She was like that, the old baseball glove that you, that you, that you, you know, <laughs> honest, honest. No, I mean this, that's and I, that's, why I, that's why I preface that right. by saying she's the old baseball glove, but that's like your, Reliable. like that's your right hand, you know what I mean? Even though you wear it on your left hand. Um, but, uh, but um, <laughs> she had such a hard, <laughs> This metaphor, it's a great analogy, she had, she had just a so hard many path metaphors. To, to tread, and, and it was great um, uh, fighting those fights with her. So I, I have a, a, a place near and dear to my heart for Sarah. <laughs> but uh, then when you throw all caution to the wind and, and you have a scene with Helena, like we said, and then later on with Crystal, uh, then, <laughs> then all bets are off, and, and it's just, it's kind of like herding cats at that point. Um, and, that, and that's fun to do, because as an actor, all you sort of want are problems to solve, something to sort of take your mind off the fact that you're a bad actor, you know what I mean? Like, oh, oh, okay, so she's here and there, and I've got to try to corral her and get these answers from Crystal, and it's, it's just impossible to do. Uh, so that kind of stuff yeah, was a lot of fun to work with. They were all like totally different people, which was the interesting thing and the and the crazy thing because of course then they weren't different people; they were the same person, but they all fe felt like different yeah. people to us. It was amazing. She is amazing. But it, it's like what Ari was saying about that the the generosity of your scene partners like those clones don't exist in a vacuum they don't exist in the, my trailer like it's when i step on set and 
you know, you treat me differently depending on who I am and we improvise differently and like all of that, it, it has to be a, a collaboration. It's not, you know, not just one person. Uh, let's see, next up, question from Rob. Um, how involved, uh, Tatiana, how involved is your stand-in um, when you're filming scenes with multiple characters and uh, clones? She's completely integral. Catherine Alexandria, I I'm, I'm really hope you guys have watched her behind the scenes stuff or watched her talk. She's incredible. Um, and she's completely integral, not only in those clone scenes, but in every scene that, that I do, because she's, she's watching dailies always. So if she's not on set, she's at home watching what we've been shooting. She's, you know, logging where the characters are at, where I'm going with somebody. She comes to set with questions, with ideas. We bounce stuff back and forth. We improvise in scenes together when we do clone scenes, which is really impossible to do because she's having to remember all these technical things, remember my impulses, remember the characters' impulses and the, the stakes and everything. And then she's able to improvise with me as that character. It's crazy. It's like totally above and beyond what I've ever seen anybody do who's not on screen. You know what I mean? Like it's it's so generous. So she's she's more than vital always, always. She's a person a lot of us would ask a question of. Like uh, mm -hmm. sometimes you just there'd be so much going on. You're coming in and out, and you'd wonder like, what time of the day is it? Or where did I go before this? Was I? <laughs> And if for some reason our continuity person, um, our script supervisor wasn't available, Louise, who's amazing as well, if Catherine was there, she'd go, Catherine, what was, she knew everything for everybody. She knew what time of day it was and where you had been before and where you're coming from. Not, she's extraordinary amount of information that she could hold on to and, and be real. She's amazing, yeah. It's an incredible approach, right? Like so much of what we do is, is not just the actual product or the result of it, it's just how we approach it in general and how we approach the failure in the actual doing of it and her approach, her approach to it is, is so generous and so passionate. And so like her work ethic is just, it's stupidly, it's incredible. Yeah. It just makes, it just kind of inspires you to work harder and that you're not working, I'm not, I'm not working hard enough. Totally. There was this, I think I, I talked about it in the last panel we did, but there's this scene re, um, between Sarah and Helena this last season. And the shot is on my face, like close up. And Catherine is so off camera, it's not even funny. Like she's not even remotely on camera. The camera is like there. And she's here. And she gives me this performance that gave everyone chills in the room, this beautiful monologue, so emotionally connected, so generous. And it just, she's not even remotely on film. Like it's that kind of commitment and openness, even if you know your result isn't gonna be seen. Like it's just, it's such a good lesson, you know, as an actor to watch that kind of generosity. It's amazing. Uh, Ari, did you have a similar relationship with your stand in, uh, uh, stand -in, in season three when there were multiple people? What was uh... Uh, Nick Abraham uh, helped me. And I think along the same lines, it was almost, it was a collaborative effort. Um, like I would, half of the choices were his, not mine, which was, which, you know, and you, I can't give him more credit for, for certain things of, of just like, like, I, I think, I think it was in the, um, the, the scene with Rudy and Seth, uh, uh, right before the, the cognitive test and Seth's lying on the couch. And I think Nick was like, what if his eyes are open? What if he's not sleeping? What if he's just sort of sitting there thinking about his brain and it was just like it and then my brain went you know like <laughs> and it, you know it, it, it just because I because that I think that was I think that was my first technology day so I was so consumed with the monumental technical side of what was happening and he was there sitting thinking about character and sort of allowed me to come back to the scene after I had sort of figured it out like the, the technical challenges that were um that day so integral integral and thankless i mean apart from us thanking them all the time but it's just like thankless that it's not their face on screen and no matter how much we say no one will ever know how much they really did yeah and that's like kind of just a testament to how much you can love this 
like how much you can love this work and love the actual process of it so much that it doesn't matter. And I'm not, like, I'm not there. I, of course, <laughs> you know, it's, it's human. I want to see myself. I want to see, I want to see it. I want to see the results. And I aspire to this, to what they're able to do, which is I love this so much that it just doesn't matter. That's pretty amazing. To me. It's it's kind of remarkable. I mean, I don't know how many of you have sort of worked in this field or, or have done this, but when you work with actors, and you can work with very wonderful actors, but when they have to deliver emotionally challenging stuff, a lot of times they save it for when the camera's on them and it's their coverage. Mm -hmm. And then when the camera's the other way and they have to deliver the same scene, you don't get even a quarter of what they delivered. Do you know what I mean? But then you have to deliver emotionally challenging stuff. So I, I'm, we're just, I'm just trying to give a little bit of context about the fact that these guys don't ever get that coverage yeah. to, to show that, hey, this is what I can do, this is where I can go. But yet they still come up and they, and they step up to the plate and knock it out of the park, take after take after take after take. And that allows all of us to just be in the moment and to just react off of what they're giving. And it is the most generous thing that any actor can give. Uh, another actor in the, on the day. So uh, once again, kudos to those guys. They, they did yeoman's work for sure. Yo people's work. Yeah. Yo people's applause work. Applause for them, they're not here. Let's uh, applause them, yeah. A uh, question from CJ, and this goes to what we were talking about in terms of the long days and just having to give your all. Uh, CJ uh, w w wants to know for everyone, um, during, the, during the long shoot days, what are some of the tips and uh, tricks you've learned to sort of be in the moment each time, even when you're on the millionth take or the <laughs> billionth take? Try not to be so tense between all the, with all the waiting and between scenes. There was times where we would hijack someone's, we, director TJ Scott, Tat and I hijacked his Bluetooth speaker and just had a dance party at like, one in the morning once when we were filming all the madness in the in the garage and it was the only way to like do just keep yourself sane and full of energy and like blood pumping yeah dance parties yeah. <laughs> and dance parties are sharing crazy youtube videos was was good as well i think we were lucky because we do like each other that and and because we got to a stage because we were doing it for so long like five years is a long time to be able to relax a bit between, because you kind of had a hold on what you, who you were or who you were going to be pretending to be. Um, so we could actually just hang out in between and tell jokes or tell stories, or, and it was enjoyable. There were people you wanted to be with, so it was great. And, and you could, yeah, distract yourself so that when you came back to saying your lines, you weren't bored of doing that or it wasn't something you felt you, you had already done or knew already. It was, you could just mess around. It was fantastic. Try not to get attached to anything either, which is like a massive note I'm giving myself in this moment because I'm yeah. so guilty of that, where I'm like, wow, that really worked. To like, I bet that looked great and I looked awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so let me try to do that 20 Again. more times and manufacture it 20 times. It's just not getting attached to anything. And when you're on the 20th take or like, if, especially if something's really technical, like inordinately technical, and you, you know you're going to have to go to this multiple times to just not not get attached to having a result and just trying to trying to just go from from where you are and see how it changes there's also a, a comfort and a confidence that comes with working on a show for so long as you get to know the crew that's been part of this family yeah. and you know you don't hit it every moment there are some takes where you crap the bed and half and three it's like quarters, late at night most and of mine. <laughs> it's late at night and they want to move on to the next shot and and you know sometimes you just after a while, I, I don't think I would ever do this in the first season, but you then have the confidence to say, actually, no, no, wait, before we move on, can I just get one more take of that? I, and then you have to deliver and do it. But, but having the confidence and the comfort and the trust of the crew and the producers and the directors and everybody, the rest of the cast, to just say, no, 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 let's get this right. Let's do this right. That was not good. I can do better. That makes me think so much about film, like as the medium itself, because the this quote unquote best takes or for these purposes we'll call it like the the most the most authentic takes are chosen to tell the story and the, the narrative is being controlled by so many people and that just the failure is never seen like actors never get to see i never get to see the failure of other actors that i really admire in film and television because i'm not actually watching the process go along so i i think it misled me into thinking that i had to be good all the time or that i had to be great all the time or that i, I had to go result ready all the time and sometimes most all the time what am i saying all the time that is not the case there is a tremendous amount of failure uh, it's it's all failure and um 
And then it's okay to learn it right there and there. Well, and that great stuff comes from the failing, from the failure of it, where you're like, that was terrible. I was uncomfortable and shaky the whole time. I didn't, I didn't do this that I was thinking of doing in this. And then the director comes out and says, like, that was great. You, that was it. That was, then you're like, well, you're insane. <laughs> And then, but, and you know, you, and you did something, you didn't know what you were doing, you lost control. I need to lose control more often and, um, and stop trying to keep it all contained, you know, and then great stuff happens. So, yeah, I think it's just, just not being misled by the fact that there's, there's tremendous failure all the time. And like, when I started, because I got so comfortable with the crew and the cast, I started playing safe and, then things would come up and I'd be like, oh my God, I'm embarrassed to do this. I'm gonna, and, and following that embarrassment was a really fun, scary thing to do. Even if it's a little thing, it might be something that somebody else would be like, why would you be embarrassed to do that? But in that moment, it's really embarrassing because it does something to your body. I don't know what it, what it is. I can't even really articulate what, I just know there was like a, <laughs> suddenly my heart would come back on and I'd be like, oh shit, I'm alive again. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> so like following, for me, it was following that, the embarrassment in whatever way that was. Yes. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's not a lie, I'm assuming this stuff. It's all a lie, <laughs> <laughs> I told you that. <laughs> well, thanks so much to the cast of Wharf and Black. The oh, thank you. final season starts June 10th on BBC America at 10 p.m. Thanks for coming out. Saturday, Saturday. <laughs>